Cape Chronicle, I'm Jacob McClellan. The Southeast Missouri State University Press is offering the Nilsson Prize for a first novel. It's an opportunity for new writers to get their book published. Here to talk with this about this opportunity is the press editor, Susan Swartout. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you too, Jacob. Thanks for inviting me. Well, first, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the first Nilsson Award uh, from last year. Um, what? Who is the author, and uh, and what book came came okay. out of this? I brought a copy of the book to show you, and the title is "The Execution of Richard Sturgis, as told by his son Colin." This is a first novel by author Tony Rogers, who is. An older writer, I better not tell his age. He's a retired Harvard attorney, and he was very excited to get his book published. He tried with commercial presses and wasn't able to. The Nielsen Award is for a first novel only, and the competition in the first year uh, netted about 168 manuscripts that we had to go through. This year, in 2003, we had 129 manuscripts. And we recently selected a uh, title, Failing the Trapeze, by Susan V. Myers of Seattle, Washington. It's her first novel, and when I called her, she had just accepted a tenure track job about a year ago, and she started crying. She said, well, looks like I've got tenure. <laughs> <laughs> so, on many levels, this is a wonderful contest to be able to sponsor. Why are these contests so important to help get to help get writers get that that first book published? To have that that incentive there, um, you know, for authors. Absolutely, it, it's very difficult to publish with a commercial press unless you're writing a series of genre fiction like uh, vampire books or or werewolf books or sci-fi books. Um, most commercial presses want named authors, so for a first timer to get out there, it's very, very difficult. With an agent, without an agent, rather, it's almost impossible to. So this affords those authors a step into the literary world, and truthfully, we do hope that they move on to bigger presses after us. We want to be that stepping stone. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Nielsen Prize itself, where this, where the, where the prize came from to begin with. The Nielsen Prize was endowed by Wadel Nielsen in name of his wife, Dorothy Ann Wadel Nielsen. Um, he was a textbook author for most of his life, wrote textbooks that were adopted by the state of California. Mm. So he uh, accrued uh, quite a substantial amount of royalties for his, uh, his books. And he wanted to help American authors um, get into the limelight. So this was kind of his dream, too. Now, another book uh, that, that's recently been published by the press, and then a second volume is coming out, is called Proud to Be. And this is a collection of poetry um, written by veterans. Um, what, what, it, what and, and, and family members of, right. of veterans. What makes this, this collection um, so unique? Proud to Be is unique on several levels. For one, it's a partnership between Southeast Missouri State University Press, Missouri Humanities Council, and Warrior Arts Alliance, and all three of us helped to produce the book. It's a collection of short stories, essays, poetry, and photographs by veterans and military service personnel. And it's different because much of our military literature is written by military historians. This is written by people in the field. Uh, who were there or are currently in service. Uh, we have pieces from people who served in Korea, World War II, um, of course Vietnam and Iraq and Desert Storm and Afghanistan. So it's a, a wide variety of points of view about military service and also their families, what it's like to be at home waiting. Now, um, are these authors, are they here locally from this region or do they come from, from, from all over the country? All over the country and, and now all over the world too because some of them are in service. Um, the second volume we've just closed submissions for it's going to be a much bigger book. I feel like the, in the Jaws movie, we're going to need a bigger boat. We're going <laughs> to have a bigger book. Um, we had um, almost 230 submissions. We received one that I was so excited about. It's an, an interview with Tim O'Brien, uh, the very famous author of, of Things They Carried, that book. Um, it also has a wonderful introduction by fiction writer John McManus of St. Louis. And it will also contain poetry, essays, short stories, um, and the interviews. 
And that'll be an addition. That's something new about this new volume is the, uh, the, the, the interviews, correct? The interviews are new, and we wanted to garner some of the stories from, say, World War II veterans who weren't comfortable with writing their own stories or would rather tell their stories to a family member who could write them down and send them to us. When will, uh, when will Volume 2 be, uh, be out? Volume 2 will be released November 15th, and it's going to be released at the St. Louis Public Library. Let's talk a little bit about some, some upcoming releases from the press, and, and including one um, called The Illegal. What's, uh, what, what's, 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 what's the premise of this book? I'm excited about it because there hasn't been much written about it in fiction or, or otherwise. Um, it's about a Mexican police officer who is involved, well, unfortunately, he didn't plan on being, is involved in drug smuggling, and he gets on the wrong side of the river. He's pushed to the wrong side of the river. He can't go back because the drug smugglers will kill his family, so he has to try to make his way in the United States as an illegal alien. He's a very sympathetic character, but he is going against the law. So it's, a, it's an interesting and controversial book written by John Mort. We've been talking today with Susan Swartout. She's the editor of the Southeast Missouri State University Press. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jacob.